All right, hello and welcome back to the Flawless Financial Training Series. My name is Armand Vakili, your host, and today we're gonna to talk about simple interest versus compound interest. We're gonna talk about the rule of 72 and we're gonna talk about how banks make money off of you and me. So let's get into it. The definition of simple interest versus compound interest, I pulled all this stuff right off of the internet so it has to be true, right? This is what simple interest is. Interest that is paid only on the principal balance. Compound interest is interest that's paid on both the principal balance and the accrued interest. Okay, so if I were to break this down to you in the simplest version possible, simple interest would be just the interest rate that you would earn on top of your principal balance and nothing else. So if you have $100,000 that's earning 8% and you got that for 10 years, your first year you would make 8,000, second year you would make 8,000, third year you would make 8,000, and then you just multiply by 10 years, that's $80,000. So at the end of 10 years, you would have $180,000. Now, if it was compound interest, same thing, $100,000 at an 8% rate of return for 10 years, it's going to be $215,892.50. So the same exact $100,000 with the same exact interest rate, except now you're doing compound interest instead of simple interest, and you have more than $35,000 difference, right? So that's the power of compound interest. Now, here's how it applies to you and your life. Credit cards work based on compound interest. So if you have a $10,000 balance on your credit card and the interest rate on the credit card is 20%, next month you're gonna have 20% on top of that 10,000, but then the month after that, if you don't pay all of that off, you're gonna get another 20% on top of the new amount. And then another 20% and another 20%. And this is how people who only make minimum payments on their credit cards, it takes them 10, 15, 20, 30 years to pay off a small credit card balance because it keeps accruing interest on top of interest. So when you're trying to save money or when you're trying to invest your money, you want to make sure that the money is being compounded. The interest is being compounded, not something that's simple interest, right? It's very, very basic. And it's almost so basic that it goes over people's heads and you don't want that to happen to you. So make sure that you're going after compound interest when you're trying to raise your money or grow your money. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the rule of 72 and I'm going to give you some numbers and just in case you're not a numbers person, bear with me. It's not going to be anything crazy complicated, so you'll still get a chance to actually understand what we're talking about and you'll get a lot of value from this. So here's what the rule of 72 is. The rule of 72, first and foremost, was created by a gentleman by the name of Albert Einstein. If you've never heard of him, he looks like this. It's the guy with the crazy hair and he has this awesome mustache. He was a Jew. <laughs> I'm Jewish, so I'm allowed to make jokes like that. Albert Einstein, on top of all of the amazing things that he invented, he also invented the law of compound interest, or which is the rule of 72. And basically, all it is, is that it helps you figure out how long it takes for money to double based on the interest rate that it's earning. Okay, so the way that the rule of 72 works is that you take 72 and you divide it by the interest rate and it'll give you a number. And that number is the number of years that it takes for the money in that account to double. So in this example, if we're gonna say that the bank account or whatever account you have is paying 4%, then you take 72, you divide it by four and it gives you 18 years. So in that account, it would take 18 years for the money to double. Now, if we have somebody who's earning 4% and let's say they're 18 years old and they've saved up all their money and their savings and they have $5,000. And so this 18 year old person with that $5,000 18 years later is gonna be 36 years old and their 5,000 is gonna double and it's gonna be $10,000. 18 years after that, they're gonna be 54 and their 10,000 doubled is $20,000. 18 years after that, they're gonna be 72 and their 20,000 doubled is $40,000, right? So we're gonna stop at 72 because typically by that time, I think the person will be retired or they're at least gonna be trying to take their money out. So what happens is that you go to the bank and you say, okay, I want my 40,000. And then there's gonna be a gentleman with this really funky hat standing and saying, hey, you know what? You need to give me my cut. And you say, what do you mean? Why do I have to give me my cut? This was my money. 
money? He goes, yeah, but you just gained all this extra money that's called capital gains. And so you have to pay me capital gains tax. That's our favorite uncle, right? Uncle Sam, he's the biggest gangster in the world. So Uncle Sam is gonna take his cut, so you don't even get to walk away with that $40,000. Now what happens is that from 18 years old to 72 years old, that's a few decades at the very least that you've left your money inside that account with the bank. And so that's free money to the bank. And what they're going to do is they're going to go and take that same $5,000 and they're going to lend it to another person and they're going to charge them anywhere from 15 to 30% as an interest rate on their credit. Then they'll go out and lend it to somebody else as either a personal loan or a line of credit and they'll charge them anywhere from 7 to 15%. And then they're going to go ahead and reinvest it back into the market. And so during any 15 to 20 to 30 year period, if you were just straight in the market over a 30 year period, the S and P 500 on average is going to pay out anywhere from 12 to 13 to 14%. So let's just be conservative and say that it got 10%. So that same 18 year old person, if their money was inside an account that was paying them 10%, you just take 72, you divide it by 10 and it's going to give you a number, which is going to be what? 7.2 years. So let's say seven years just to be nice about it. So 18, $5,000. Seven years later, it's going to be 25. 5,000 double this, 10,000. Seven years later, they're 32, it turns to 20,000. At 39, it turns to 40. At 46, it turns to 80. At 53, 160. At 60, 320,000 dollars. At 67, 640,000 dollars. That's over half a million dollars. And at 74, right around the same time as the other guy, it's gonna be 1.28 million dollars that this person will have had if they were earning 10% instead of 4%. So let's say you even had to pay half of that in taxes and you only got to walk away with $640,000. I would much rather have $640,000 versus $40,000. I don't know about you, but I would definitely take the six forty dollars any day of the week. Now here's the reality of this situation. Banks right now are not paying 4%. They're not even paying 3% or 2%. If you're lucky, you can go find some kind of a bank account or a CD that'll pay you 1%. So 72 divided by 1 is 72 years. So imagine how long it would take for the money in that account to double. That's 72 years that it would take. Now, the majority of the banks, especially in my part of town, I'm in Los Angeles, I'm in Southern California, the banks over here are paying half a percent, sometimes 0.15% or 0.2%. So let's say they were paying half a percent. Based on the same formula, 72 by half a percent is 144 years that it would take for the money in that account to double. And people will fight you tooth and bone saying that their bank account is awesome and they're never going negative and all this different kind of stuff. And you know what? You're right. Your account will never go negative. But if we're going to compare the amount of money that you're paying in taxes and all of that interest, and if we're going to compare your interest rate versus the rate of inflation that's happening in the economy right now, inflation is at the very least three and a half, four percent. So if you're not earning at least three and a half, four percent after taxes, then you're actually losing the value of your dollar. So that's how banks make money. Isn't that pretty interesting? Now you as the smart consumer, you're watching this video and you're educating yourself and you've subscribed to our channel. Hint, hint, if you haven't subscribed already, you better subscribe. So you have subscribed to our channel, you're gonna get all of this free information that we're giving you. And as long as you apply the information that you learn, you're gonna get way ahead financially, which is a beautiful thing. Now don't get me wrong, okay? Banks definitely do have their purpose. Bank accounts definitely have their purpose. But when you're talking about growing your money, when you're talking about investing your money, when you're talking about building your nest egg, you don't want to do it in a bank CD. And if you're there right now, you need to move immediately. If you don't want to do it with us, go find a broker that has some kind of a good head on their shoulders and have them do some good research for you to see if there are any good accounts or any good options available for you based on your goals and your current scenario. Now, we would love to speak with you. We have licensed representatives that are very competent. They've been in the industry for years and years 
years and years. They know exactly what they're talking about and they've dealt with so many different scenarios and so many different cases that your situation would be something that they would be more than able to handle. So if you'd like, you're more than welcome to request a free consultation from us. There's absolutely zero charge. There's no obligation to do any business with us. We're great people. We actually care about your success financially and we want to do everything that we possibly can to help you. So this was the episode today. I really hope you found it valuable. Please leave all of your comments and questions, anything that may have been unclear to you. Leave all of that in the comments section below. We'll do our best to answer it in the comments. If we can't answer it in the comments because the answer may be too long, then we'll cover it in future videos. And if you actually want to learn about certain strategies or if you want to learn about certain things that are on your mind right now, go ahead and leave it in the comments section as well. We really would love to hear from you. All of this, again, is designed for you. So if I know what you want to learn, if our staff knows what you want to learn, we can go ahead and design all of our content around you and your preferences, which is the ideal situation because then you can actually apply it to your life and get real results. So my name is Armand Vakili. Please like, subscribe, share this video, post it on social media, do whatever you can to get the word out because it's very important for us to help the world as much as we possibly can. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a beautiful day wherever you are.